Hi guys, it's James here from Optics Warehouse, your night vision and hunting specialist. And today you join us in what is probably going to be sort of like the second episode in our series of comparing the top four thermal brands across various ranges in different categories for different price brackets. So as you would have seen, we've already released the footage of the four units I have in front of me at different distances at night for you to compare and analyze yourself. Obviously we put each one on their optimum setting so you can really get the benefit of the image image of, uh, of each one. So what have I got in front of me here? Uh, well, as, as the video uh, on, on uh, all the footage, uh, I've got the same four units that we had there. So we've got the sort of the price range uh, bracket of sort of like the 1500 to 2200 sort of range. So I've got the HIC Micro Al 35. I have the iRay i3 V2 Max. I have the Guide Track IR 35 and I have the Pulsar Helion 2 XQ38F. Now the point of this video is, because I didn't uh, emphasize it on the, on the last video, is I'm just gonna go through a few bits of, few bits of uh, info regarding, regarding the units themselves, what they actually include. I'm not gonna go too much because each one of these units would have had their own sort of quick fire review already. So we'll start with the HIC, 30, HIC, 35, HIC 35 Micro Al, sorry, the HIC Micro 35 Al. Um, this has proved to be an incredibly popular unit and really was sort of the forefront in the in the in the thermal units that weren't Pulsar to come out into the market over the past 12 months. They really have led the way. You've got a nice styled unit here, nothing too big, fits really well into the hand. Uh, it's got a nice simple menu system on it, nice focusable diopter, nice focusable objective, little rubber cap that comes on and off at the back. But as I say, I won't go too much into detail on it. I say just click that one back in there. But internally, that's what's important. This has a 384 by 288 with a 17 micron pixel pitch sensor, but the most important fact is that it has a net D of sub 35 millikelvin. That is incredibly important for the fact that it actually allows you to get a much, much more higher definition image of what it is you're looking at. Not necessarily just the target, which of course you can be able to identify probably better than most of the thermal units out on the market, but you can positively identify where exactly is, is you are, because sometimes at night, uh, you're not 100% of the backstop, unless you know the land like the back of your hand, it's not always 100% guaranteed. So for highest definition, uh, value for money wise, and quite a, a basic operating system, the HIC 35 is, uh, is gonna tick all of those boxes. Next, we have the iRay E3 V2 Max, now the Max is obviously again a 35mm 35 35mm 35 variant of the E3 V2 range. This has a 384 by 12 micron sensor in it rather than a 17 micron sensor. So what that actually produces is a higher, defini higher definition on the image itself you're looking at. So whether it be a fox, a rabbit, uh, anything else that you're, you're out shooting at night, it'll actually produce that. But this does come with sub 50 millikelvin, so, not, so behind it, let's say the trees, for example, you're not necessarily gonna get a great definition of it, but as I said, you will get an incredible definition of the actual image you're looking at. Uh, what I do like about this is that it's not like the other units where it has like this sort of black and white look to it. It actually has sort of this, this sort of sepia, sepia greenish tinge to it. And that, that actually, as, as someone that uses thermal quite a lot, that actually is a, a bit more helpful on the eye. So that's the eye rate. Next, we have the Guide Track IR35. Uh, quite a nice, robust unit. I'd definitely say it's probably one of the most robust out of the four that we have here. Nice, positive buttons on the top. I do like that, especially at night time. If you, if you are having a look at night and you can't necessarily feel the buttons, so if you look at the Hick and the iRay and the Pulsar uh, in that respect, they've all got sort of like flat, flush buttons. The guide has these sort of proud buttons and they've really got the definition on there so you can you know exactly what it is you're touching. Uh, again, this one actually has a 400 by, um, 400 by 300 sensor inside, the 17 micron again, so it's a few more pixels than 388 by 288, but it, um, but it still produces a very, very good image. It's much like the IRA in that respect, in that it actually defines the image quite well, works very well on black hot and on white hot. Of course, it has many other color palettes as well. But because of the sub 50 millikelvin, of course, you're not gonna get the high definition of the background. 
But as I said, on the actual target itself, like the fox, the deer, or the rabbit, whatever it is you're looking for, it um it will it will pick it up pretty well, and you can very well positively identify objects with it. And I do like uh, so it's on the IRO as well, so I didn't elaborate on it, but it's got this nice thumb sort of diopter on the side that you can just adjust, and that just helps helps for your different eyes. So I'll just show you there. So it's just nice and easy just to flick up and down. Uh, again, rubber cap on the end and adjustable objective. Next and uh, last out of this particular range, we have the Pulsar, I'll just show you that, the Pulsar Helion 2 XQ38F. This is the latest from the more affordable range of Pulsars. Uh, the one big difference that they've had on this from the original Pulsars is this mag magnesium alloy housing that allows it to, to vent and cool down a lot quicker. And you'd expect nothing less from Pulsar. I mean, they've been in this game God knows how many years now. Um, absolutely fantastic pieces of kit. And the one thing the Pulsar has over all the other units is that it has the, the best operating system. It has the really easy menus, the really easy setup that say like the calibration, the pixel repair, the color palettes, all of that is it is better than the, than the other units here. But, 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 but it has a net D of sub 40 millikelvin. So it is quite close to the HIC. So you're gonna get a very similar sort of image that you get with a HIC but it can sometimes just blur out. As you would have seen on the footage, say it's particularly at 100 yards, uh, like the dog, um, which obviously represented sort of the fox size object, did occasionally blur out. And that was on the best, most uh, defined and focused setting that we, uh, we, we could get it on. So you are gonna find sometimes that it might blur out the object, but um, it will still it will still identify it pretty well. And I find, I find these particular units, they actually work well at distance because and we will we will show that because we are planning on doing so like a 300 yard video with all these units so we can so we can show you um but as i said the pulsar it's, it's been around a long time it's the only one of these units that actually has a removable battery which some people can see is quite a big advantage uh, obviously you can take a spare battery with you um but say it's very easy you just you just clip it in and you can just take it out and then you just clip it back back in as so um but I say Pulsar have been around a long time, so you expect a high grade, a high grade unit to come out. So that was the four within the sort of 1500 to two sort of price range. As I say, this is the beginning of a series that we are looking to do now that we have got four different thermal brands here. We're very fortunate to do so. We're one of the very few retailers in the country that actually do. So we can, we can uh, create an impartial review on each each one because there is a lot of a lot of chat out there on the internet of people saying, "Oh, this is best. This is best. This is rubbish. This is this is rubbish." And it's just we like to we're just trying to show you what you actually get for your for your money with each individual unit. The plan is, as I said already, with the Pulsar to do a 300 yard video just so we can show you a more realistic range of obviously picking up a target. And we're also planning on doing a video in the rain so we can really show you how the how the net D works, because um, in all honesty, not every single night's every single night's clear or has had a sunny day. Uh, this is England after all, England, Scotland, etc. So it's, it's going to be it's going to be pants weather sometimes. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I so said this is just the, the mid range of, of uh, thermal monoculars that are out there at the moment. Uh, so we've got a lot more to come. Uh, I hope this has been informative. I've been James, your night vision hunting specialist, and this has been another video by Optics Warehouse.